In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at simplifying expressions using the distributive property. Now, the distributive property comes in when you have an expression written like this, where it has parentheses in it. And we use distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. Now, before I start actually doing that, I want to make sure we understand what we mean when we talk about simplifying an expression. Mathematically speaking, what we are worried about doing when we simplify is we are going to try to get rid of any parentheses that are currently in it, and we will combine like terms. And that's also the order that you will want to do this in. Get rid of the parentheses and then combine any like terms that you can see. So let's go ahead and do that for this first one. Now the distributive property means that we will distribute whatever is out front of the parentheses by multiplying it by every single term inside the parentheses. Now I'm talking about different terms in the parentheses. Remember, terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So those are our two terms that are inside of the parentheses. So I'm going to be needing to first multiply the 2 by the a. So I'm going to be multiplying 2 by a like that. 2 times a is 2a. Okay. Now you notice that the next thing here is a minus symbol. That minus is going to stay a minus here. And then I'm going to have to multiply the 2 times the 5, which of course is 10. And so by distributing that 2 into the parentheses, that is multiplying it by everything inside of the parentheses, we end up with 2a minus 10. Now notice that there are no like terms in this expression because the first term has an a in it and the second term does not. And in order for us to add or subtract the terms to combine them, they have to have the same variable and the same exponent on the variable. And since this does not have the same variable in both, that's why this 2a minus 10 would be our final answer for that problem. In our next example, we are going to simplify this expression by, again, distributing. In this case, I'm going to multiply the 5 into both terms inside the parentheses. And so the 5 is going to multiply by both the 9m and by the 3n. Those are the two terms inside the parentheses because they are the ones separated by the addition. All right, so then in order to do this, the first thing I want to do is multiply 5 times 9m. Well, 5 times 9 is 45. And I'm multiplying 5 by 9m. There's no m on the outside of the parentheses. It's only the m on the inside. And so that m stays an m. It does not change at all. So 5 times 9 gives me the 45, and then the m stays the same. I now will also multiply the 5 by the 3n. So 5 times 3 gives me 15, and then the n is still the n. But of course, this is missing something at the moment, right? Whatever this sign is needs to carry through. And so since that was a plus up there, it's going to be a plus on the next line as well. And so that is then our final answer. It will be 45m plus 15n. And do note, that is as good as I can make it because the two terms have different variables in them. If they were both the same variable, we could go one step further. But since one is an m and the other is an n, it's as good as we can make it right there. All right, now on to this problem. Now we start getting into the ones that can be potentially tricky. We have the set of parentheses that we need to get rid of, but we have a minus out front of those parentheses. What does that minus really mean? Well, when we see that minus out front, if I wanted to actually write a little bit more in there to make it a little bit easier to read, I could write it as negative 1 parentheses 5x plus 8 because that minus that's sitting out front of the parentheses really means that I'm multiplying it by negative 1. Now, if I go ahead and multiply that negative 1 into the parentheses here then, so I do negative 1 times 5x, which is going to give me negative 5x, and then the plus 
and then I do the negative 1 times the 8, which is negative 8. All right, well, I, I, I'm not particularly happy with one little aspect of my answer here. It looks awkward to me because I wrote plus negative 8. And we generally don't want to have to write plus a negative like that, right? So instead of writing plus negative 8, I would encourage you, go ahead and then just go ahead and turn it into minus 8. Because plus a negative is the same as just subtracting a positive like that. This would be our nice, pretty final answer right here. So yes, we want to end with negative 5x minus 8. Notice what then this minus that was sitting outside the parentheses did. It flipped the sign of everything inside of the parentheses. So the positive 5 became a negative 5, and the positive 8 became a negative 8, because we flipped the signs. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, do I really have to write out this particular step? You know, do I have to first write it on my paper with the negative 1 in there? No, you don't have to. Uh, I just wrote that there so that you could be reminded about what it really meant. You also might be wondering, do I also have to write it this way first, where I start by writing it as plus the negative, or can I just go to the minus 8 in the end? Yes, you could also just go straight to the minus 8 in the end. I just want to make it clear why we get there by drawing that extra little step out. So then in our next problem, now this one looks very similar to the last one, except we have this number that's out front of the minus symbol this time. And so what's that going to do? Well, at first, it's not going to do anything. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the parentheses, which means multiplying in anything that is out front of the parentheses. In the last problem we did, we saw that this, where we have the minus in front of the parentheses, is the same thing as that, where we would write it as negative 1 times 5w plus 2. And that's the way to think about it here, is the very first thing we want to do is we are going to multiply in that negative into the parentheses. What's going to happen to the 8? Well, the 8, it's still just going to be hanging out, out front here. And then I do go ahead and start distributing. So if I do negative 1 times 5w, that gives me a negative 5w. Notice that means it becomes subtraction. So that ends up being 8 minus 5w then, because I don't really want to write 8 plus negative 5w. And then I'm going to multiply the negative 1 also by the 2, which will then give me a negative 2. So then that will become subtraction by 2. So now that I've done that, I can now go ahead and see if I'm done. That is, are there any like terms here that I can combine? And in this case, now there is. Yes, we do have some like terms here that we can go ahead and combine, specifically the 8 and the 2. But I don't want you looking at this number as a 2. I want you looking at it as a negative 2. Whatever sign is out front of it, goes with it to tell you what the sign of that number is. So if I go ahead and start combining them then, 8 minus 2 is 6. And then notice there's no other like terms with the 5w, because nothing else has a w in it. And so that's going to stay exactly the same, so I just write minus 5w. Whatever the sign is out front of the 5w, that carries down because I didn't change anything about it. And so then this 6 minus 5w is my final answer. And in this last problem out of this particular video, we're basically using all the different skills that you've seen before, just putting them all together. Notice we again have a number that's out front. That 5, though, is not being multiplied into the parentheses. I need to figure out what is being multiplied into the parentheses. So I look immediately out front of it, and I see a 6. But it's not a 6 that I'm multiplying into the parentheses, because whatever sign is in front of it is going to go with it. So I'm actually going to be multiplying in negative 6. 
And so I'm going to multiply negative 6 into the parentheses. So what happens to the 5? Well, nothing at first. It's just going to stay a 5. And then I'm going to do negative 6 times x, which is negative 6x. And so I'm going to write that then as minus 6x. And then I'm going to do the negative 6 times negative 2. Well, a negative 6 times a negative 2 is a positive 12. And since it is positive, it then is addition. So that's going to be plus 12. I've now done the distributing in order to be able to get rid of the parentheses. So now that I've gotten rid of my parentheses, the last step is to combine any like terms that we might see. And yes, we do have like terms here. The 5 does not have a variable in it, nor does this 12. Therefore, those two can combine with each other. So 5 plus 12 is 17. And then the minus 6x, it doesn't combine with anything else, so it's just going to stay minus 6x. And then that is our final answer for this one.